Hey YouTubers, I got a little bit of an update. I have been fighting and fighting and fighting trying to get the tune right on this stupid blazer. Um, I thought I had it all figured out and lo and behold, when the engine's at full operating temperature, it'll fire right up, locates idle, doesn't surge, doesn't die on D cell or after rev. But if you do a cold start on swing, search for idle, so right now, my biggest concern is um, I had a new drive shaft built for the Blazer. It did take two weeks to get it, but I got a really kicking deal on it. Um, I upgraded it to a thick, heavy wall, three inch steel drive shaft, new ends, and now it no longer has the conversion U joint in the back. So now the rear of the, of the rear of the drive shaft has a straight 1330 uh, U-joint to go to the 1330 companion flange on the 88. Then we went to a 4L80E uh, yoke, cut it to the appropriate length to work in my application. It uses a 3LR three, three, uh, U-joint on both sides. Um, it does have spicer joints in it. Um, the reason why we went with that bigger size is because for strength and because I'm hoping, you know, it'll hold up once I go turbo because that, you know, heavy wall three inch is going to be a lot stronger than the regular standard OEM two and three quarter drive shaft that I pulled out with those smaller, weaker U-joints. So, fingers crossed. But right now, the problem I'm having is I put in the new drive shaft got less than 10 miles and something in the rear end is i don't know i think the pinion bearing the pinion nut preload something is not right so at this point i you know have reserved myself to run out here in between raindrops because it's pretty much rained me out all weekend long to try to verify the angles of this drive line so let me show you guys what i found so far and that way you guys can maybe give me some feedback in the comments on how you think I should fix it. All right, guys, these are the numbers I have on my measurements as it sits right now. Basically, what I did was put my magnetic angle gauge under the frame with the vehicle at ride height. Then I raised the vehicle off the ground with the rear end supported on jack stands and then recreated that ride height angle of the frame. That way I could have a, 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 to, a to A, B to B, everything was the same as far as my suspension under compression as ride height. Then I measured in the rear, my pinion angle at the 8.8 is a negative 6.5 degrees. The drive shaft as it comes down and connects to the companion flange is at a plus eight degrees. So what you do is you add those together and it gives you your, your rear, I guess, U-joint angle. So I'm at a plus 1.5 degrees when I thought I would be negative, but it gets worse. So in the front, where your output shaft is on your on your transmission, whether it be turbo for 400, 350, 4L80, whatever, your my, where my yoke comes out of the transmission is negative three degrees. Then the drive shaft is at negative ten degrees. So up at the back of the transmission, I've got a negative thirteen degrees, and that's that's horrible. That's absolutely not acceptable. So in the chassis tuner guides, they're, they're wanting you, depending on which company you look at, they're wanting the rear to be around a negative one to a negative two degree net. But I don't know that I'm going to be able to get there because I don't want to shoot that pinion any farther down towards the ground. So my other option is, is try to level out the drive shaft. Now in the front, I have a lot of leeway to lower the back of that transmission a little bit, decreasing the drive shaft angle. So I'm hoping that I can play with the angle 
in the front by the back of the transmission and try to get all these numbers to jive with each other to get equal yet opposite numbers at each end because if you look up any chassis tuner guide or, or book they want you to have equal and opposite angles between the pinion end of the drive shaft and the output of your transmission so you know let's just say I can uh, lower the front of that drive shaft, possibly get the rear to a net uh, zero, maybe zero or a negative one. Negative one would be a blessing and maybe be able to get a positive one in the front. I don't know. This is our challenge. Let's accept the challenge and see what we can find out. All right, guys, I wanted to give you a little visual representation what I was talking about on my rear angles and the fact that you add them together to get your net uh, universal joint angle the drive shaft is what they're considering a positive eight degrees and the yoke if I can get over here without blocking you guys is at a negative 6.5 so if you take a negative 6.5 at the pinion and a positive 8 on your drive shaft you add those together I'm still at a positive 1.5 which is definitely not the recommended angle for your rear u-joint especially with a leaf sprung suspension so right now let me go reposition up front and show you my measurements on the front by the output on the train. I can't see anything, guys. I'm just going to hope you can see this. Basically, up here, drive shaft angle, negative 10 degrees. Yoke, negative 3 degrees. So when you add negative 3 to negative 10, you get negative 13. And that's absolutely horrible. So, I don't know. I'm going to lower the transmission down a little bit, take out some of my shims, and just see if I can get something to kind of level out. Yep, started raining on me again. I'm going to try to take it out for a cruise. I lowered the front driveline angles. They're still not right. But I just want to take it around my little neighborhood here and see if that vibration and that craziness is any better or any worse. So let's see what it does.